Hello, New Beginnings Church. It's Tuesday. Today we're in Acts chapter 10. We're going to start in verse number 6. Uh, yesterday we learned that Cornelius needed to call for a man named Peter to tell him about who Jesus was. Great story. If you missed yesterday, let's go back. It was only like five minutes long. Today, so we're starting in verse 6. He is lodging with Simon a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they went on their journey, they drew near the city, and Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And when he became very hungry, he wanted to eat. But while they, were made, while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and saw heaven open, and an object like a great sheep bound at four corners, and sang to him, and let down to the earth. And it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. Now, it's interesting, if you have your Bible in front of you, that these words are in red. So who's talking to Peter right now? It's Jesus. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And the voice spoke to him again the second time, saying, What God has cleansed you, you must not call common. And this was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. Three and Peter seemed to go together well, right? Uh, how many times did Peter betray Jesus? Three times. Uh, when Jesus asked him, do you love me? How many times did Jesus ask him? Three times. Now he sees his vision of a sheet three times. It sounds like Peter's a little bit hard to get through. You know, the good news about that is sometimes we are too. Uh, but here, so he's seen this vision of this thing coming in. God is preparing Peter to go do something amazing. And it says in verse 17, Now while Peter wondered within himself what this vision he had seen had meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And uh, so that, that's interesting. And, and he's like, you know, don't doubt anything. So Peter's wondering, what, what's this vision mean? Why, why all these things? He's like, I, I can't eat these things. I'm, I'm not allowed to. And God's, what's God saying in this vision? Here's the thing. We're supposed to look on everybody and say, there's everybody that God made is needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We shouldn't be particular or picky about who we share the gospel with. Because right now, Peter, he's only shared it with other Jews, the people of God. And God said, no, I made all this stuff. This, this is. I, I want you to share it with everybody you can. And but Peter doesn't quite get it, and so he's still thinking about him. So God says, you know, while you're thinking about this, even though you haven't quite figured it out yet, just just go and don't doubt. You know, sometimes when we follow God, we're not going to quite understand what God's doing. We're going to go, God, are you sure that's what's going on? Here's the thing: God always knows what He's doing. We don't always know what God's doing, but trust me, God always does. And sometimes it's better for us just to go along with what God says and don't doubt and see what happens. Enjoy the ride. See what God does. Don't try to overanalyze things. We do that a lot as humans, don't we? You know, if you read through the scriptures, God doesn't do a lot of that. He, he just kind of tells you how it is. He's pretty black and white about things. And we praise the Lord for that. He's saying, Peter, just, just go on the journey. You, you'll you'll get it. It, it. You'll have this aha light bulb moment. And later in the chapter, he he, he does have that moment. Uh, actually, he really gets a light bulb moment when he's back in Jerusalem trying to defend why he went there. That's in Acts chapter eleven. Uh, we are may not we may or may not get to that this week, but let's continue along in chapter ten. We're in verse twenty now. Arise, therefore, go down. Oh no, we did that. Twenty one. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, "Yes, I am whom you seek." For what reason have you come? So he's asking, why are you here? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nations of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and hear words from you. And so they're saying, hey, this guy, he's not Jewish. Oh, by the way, he's a centurion. He's the enemy. But uh, uh, an angel came down, divinely told him a dream to come see you. Now Peter's trying to put two plus two together. Cornelius had a dream. Peter had a dream. Cornelius was talked to by an angel. Peter was talked to by Jesus. He's probably putting two and two together like, uh, there's got to be something to this. Right? And so verse 23, Then he invited them in and lodged them. And on the next day, Peter went away with him, and some brethren from Joppa accompanying him. 
And then the following day, they entered Caesarea. Now, Cornelius was waiting for them. It called together his relatives and close friends. Now, here's the thing. Cornelius is excited to hear what Peter has to say. He, he's, he's called his relatives, his close friends. Now, you got to think about it. Cornelius... Uh, probably his relatives and close friends, they, they, they weren't Jewish. They probably didn't care about Jesus. They probably had their own gods of this and that from their Roman culture and all that. But why did they come? Well, relatives, because back then, if the father spoke something, you kind of, you kind of did what he said, no matter what. And he was excited about Peter coming to share this about him. You know what? Excitement brings people's curiosity. Even if they don't like what's going on, they might follow you because of your curiosity. Are you excited about serving God? Are you excited about going to church? What is your demeanor about going to church? We just talked about that last Sunday. It can speak volumes to those around you. And his, rel and his friends, right? Close friends. You know, they, they might not want to hear it, but because of Cornelius' excitement, they chose to show up. Maybe some showed up because they wanted to get in favor because he was a centurion. But you know what? Cornelius' excitement, said, why is this guy? Let's, let's go see what he's all excited about. You want to bring someone to Jesus? Be excited about that and see what God does. Well, we'll be back tomorrow to uh, talk more about this story. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. And you're absolutely amazing.